Hi, welcome. My name is Mark Greenwood. I'm joined by Chris Cartwright and Gary Gibbs. And we're so excited to be chatting to you today about another fantastic strategic partnership for evangelism. Is this is the first of these videos that you've watched. Welcome, but watch the others. And if you watch many of them, you're also welcome. And I hope you're getting a sense that we're really excited that we feel God is stirring something within us as we look across Ealing World and see all that God is doing through our local churches. There's a kind of collective feel that God is doing something. And so we're partnering strategically with a number of organizations that in truth, we already have relationship with. And today is no exception. We want to chat to you a little bit about our partnership with Rock, known as Redeeming Our Communities, and just why we are partnering particularly with that organization. So sit back, put the kettle on, and have a watch. Chris, we love Rock and Deborah Green and all that yeah. they are doing. And you know, as I as I look at what Rock are doing that they're, they're doing some incredible stuff about cohesing mm. lots of people with the same heart that may not be Christians and the same heart about making our communities better places to live but community engagement social justice yeah. all of these things they're right on our agenda as Christians in the healing world and really they're accelerating aren't they they are, I mean, very much so. We keep referencing the last couple of years and the journey that we've all been on uh, in, uh, in, in our communities. We've seen just this real sense of more, more vulnerability than ever, more sense of needing each other than ever. And that's not just been a monopoly of Christian people of the local church. Um, so into that space though, what we've recognized is that churches that were already engaging with their community, mm -hmm seem to have uh, something of a head start in, mm. in responding to that great outpouring of, 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 of social need and community need. And uh, looking back even over the, the, the last couple of years, we can see that actually those churches have, have had even more of an opportunity. They've strengthened in that area. And, and we're really excited by that, or, although we, we don't assume that it's automatic or that it's just... Um, you know, uh, something that, that, that is easy. We've also, though, seen a whole bunch of other churches beginning to say, hey, how do we respond right. Mm, right. to our wider community? And the great thing about Rock and the partnership with Deborah and the Rock team is that they have a track record yeah. of seeing something yeah. locally. First of all, I, I, my understanding of it in the city of Manchester, just some amazing favour, amazing things beginning to happen, but then realising that others were asking them to share that story and to help them with how they could not just be looking outwardly, but actually embedding uh, the church's witness and care and compassion uh, and, and, and the heart of Jesus in each local community. Mm. So we're really excited about that and committed yeah. to it. And more than that, Mark, we believe that it, this is actually a part of the full gospel anyway. Yes. That it's not yeah, just about yeah. the words yeah. of Jesus and the words of the gospel and the words of our, 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 our Christian faith and experience, but it's also about showing as well as telling. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one of those key areas where at the moment we're kind of growing into our own story. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. One of the things I love about rock is when you listen to the story, you get a chance to chat with Deborah, and people can see this in some of the, the interview that I did with her, is the whole of what Rock is was born out of prayer. Actually, some real prayer stories, seeing God move. Even, I mean, even their headquarters that they have is a staggering story. It's a staggering building. And so, so that's really exciting, that it's born out of a passion for prayer and believing that God's going to move. But also I think what's really exciting is um, Deborah's a big fan of our big yes, look, yes, yeah. healthy maybe narrative. And she said to me that it gave them as an organisation a, a missiological language. She didn't always fully uh, feel she could communicate to church leaders where they were positioned. So I think partnering with Rock, they get our ethos mm. on caring actions, on creating 
as many healthy maybes, and by that we mean people that are starting to think, well, maybe there's something yeah, yeah. in this. And community engagement's a, a great way of doing that. Have, have you observed a massive shift in Elim? I mean, you, you, you're a bit of a historian when it mm, comes mm. To, to Elim. Have, have you seen a significant dial-up in terms of churches wanting to engage with their communities in, in over carrying action stuff. Yeah, I have, Mark. And, and I, I guess, you know, I, I, I do uh, kind of know the Elim story well enough, I guess, yeah. to recognise it's not all completely new. Yeah. But it feels like we're going back to some of the very early days right, where, right. where the natural outworking of people coming to faith and following Jesus in a community was that they began to make a difference. Yeah, and some right. of the untold stories are really about that, about mm. what happened when... And a, a new church was 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 birthed in a community, yeah. um, and and how they began to take that into practical action. Right. So I think it's a, a returning to DNA story that, that is happening excellent. right now. But I, I am sensing a lot more conversations, yeah. a lot more sharing of the story, and um, I don't know about you. Mark and Gary, but sometimes, you know, we, we may not have great experience in something ourselves, but we know a few people who did. Yes. So we <laughs> yes. go find them. Yeah, and, absolutely. And I've done that in, yeah. in pastoral ministry over the years. Yeah. I went and found uh, friends that, that had experience of transforming community. That's what this is all about, yeah, isn't it? Not absolutely. just transforming one uh, segment of a community, mm. but actually wanting to see this really reach out to... Oh, I think there are so many great new stories yeah. of, of new expressions and new adventures in this. Yeah. No, you're right. And one of the, the brilliant things about Rock is they've got, and Deborah particularly has this incredible God-given ability and favour to bring together people in communities who, who otherwise wouldn't even know each other, let right. alone have conversations yeah. with each other. And she's in all sorts of places. They've seen hundreds of people in the same room um, talking about community transformation. But, yeah. Gary, how, how do we hold this idea of, of going out and being kind and being nice and loving mm -hmm. people and transforming with, with, like, the articulation of the gospel and the spirit's power? How does, how does that all hold together? Because we're Pentecostals, right? Mm -hmm. we, how do we see the spirit moving power? So where do mm -hmm. we... Where do we synergize and fuse, and I like this word, cohese. Ooh. Yeah, it's my favorite word at the moment. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but it's my favorite word. That's a great word. question, Mark. It's, when I was a young follower of Jesus, just, just saved really, I remember seeing a poster on a wall from Christian Aid, mm -hmm. and it was a, a, the, the photograph was of a, a child, a, an African child, lying flat out on a, like a desert floor. Mm -hmm. And the message was, you cannot preach salvation to a corpse. Right. I still remember it. I mean, that's Gosh, 50 yeah. years ago or so, you know. Uh, uh, obvious though, isn't it really? Yeah. So, um, you know, we can say the right words, power-filled words to people, but unless we're re recognising the holistic nature mm. of the gospel, mm. um, that it's about words, yes. Uh, it's about wonders, signs and wonders and miracles. We believe all that, of course we do. But it's also about works mm. and it's as old as the bible of this stuff isn't yeah, it you know yeah, jesus yeah. says let your light I'm, I'm teaching my granny here to suck eggs <laughs> with our audience but you know let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven so it's biblical it's also uh, the best moments in church history it's been part of the mission and ministry of of god's people right the way through the celtic church wesley wilberforce shaftesbury you know, into the 20th century with world vision and, you know, lots and lots of uh, agencies as well as obviously the local church doing that, you know. And so it's the, part of our Pentecostal story. And it's part of our story yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, a, a part yeah, of the untold yeah. story of yeah, that is, yeah. is of, of churches that were transformational in the society. Well, forgive me, because you see, I, I didn't even know that. I knew yeah, yeah, the yeah, historian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but of course that makes sense. Joe, Joe Bloggs and Mrs. Bloggs come to faith. Yeah. And it changes everything yeah. about their lives, including their generosity to people in need yeah. around them, doesn't it? We've you know? had churches planted out, out of one, in, in years gone by, well-known churches that were planted mm. because one family got saved. Yeah. And wow. they were so notorious in the area that every single person yeah. there was a, 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 around them was impacted yeah. by that. Fantastic. That's amazing, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, I, one of the things I love to see, you know, we get to travel a fair bit and, and see lots of local churches. And to see the way they're serving their communities. Yeah, yeah, and as Chris yeah. said, 
Some of that was happening way before the pandemic, but was accelerated through the pandemic. Yeah. But even some of the, the recent stuff, I, I'm involved, as you know, part of my time yeah. with the Wolverhampton Church Plant. And uh, I just picked up a stat from Simon, the, the lead pastor, uh, yesterday, that this summer we are feeding 4,000 people. Wow. I mean, physically That's feeding 4,000 people. Wow. We're, we're a small church plant yeah, at the minute. Yeah. And yet Amazing. still, uh, but what, what that's doing is it's given us, uh, we don't do it for this reason uh, primarily, but it gives us credibility in yes. the community. Yeah. You know, because as we're aware, sometimes secular media is not helpful to us in terms of how they portray the Christian church. Mm. And that comes out, you know, in the Talking Jesus research, uh, it comes out there that mm. people like Christians, but they have often a negative view of the church, not because they've experienced church, it's because of what they've picked up on media, right, yeah. you yeah. know, so often. So we've got a job to do there in terms of uh, changing perceptions in our communities about who we are. One of my friends, Lawrence Singlehurst, he used to talk about the fact that um, the message we need to give up front is God's good and we're okay. Yeah, yeah. God's yeah. good and we're okay. And that's yeah. like a first step in on that journey of people towards faith. Yeah. Um, now, of course, at the end of the day, is it enough to feed the hungry? The answer is yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? it of really course is, it yeah. is. Of course you meet the physical needs of people yeah. around you. But if there's not something burning within us yeah, right. to be asked the question, why are you doing this for me? Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. If there's not something burning within us that where we can share even better news, the good news of what God's done for us through Jesus, then there's something deficient yeah, in us. Definitely. That's why we talk about holistic mission, yeah. integral mission. I think our friend Gav Calver often says, doesn't he? I don't yeah. care whether you paint your neighbor's fence and then tell him about Jesus yeah. or tell him about Jesus and then paint his <laughs> yeah. fence. For goodness sake, paint his fence and tell him about Jesus. I mean, assuming he wants his fence painting, of course, but uh, I think that's yeah. it, isn't it's, it? It's, it's not good. one or the other. Yeah, it's exactly hands. right. And the problem has been a little bit in recent years, the last decade or two, that we have been binary about this. You've yeah. done one or the other, yeah. you know. And so often in the Christian church, when we've talked about mission, we've missed out the E word, you know. So we've done mission without evangelism. Yeah. Well, it, you know, evangelism sits right front and center in the mission of God, what we're yeah, called to. Absolutely. So of course we're meant to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, you know, speak a, a, about issues of social justice yeah. and equality and all of that, which is where organizations like Rock can really help us yeah, to get yeah, on board absolutely. with all of that. Um, but still, people need to give their lives yeah, to Jesus. Yeah. Do you think I'm an evangelist? Yeah. <laughs> you might well be. Can I throw an unplanned question you can. into yeah, this, all right? Perfect. I don't think it's controversial. I think I kind of know the answer, unless I've completely misread the room or the sofa <laughs> anyway. So I'm aware Jesus, full of the Spirit, went around, da-da-da-da-da, but he went around... Doing, doing good, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then it was a bunch of Pentecostals that were appointed to take care of the poor and needy mm -hmm. in the church, wasn't it? Yeah. So here's my question. Is it possible to be genuinely Pentecostal and full of spirit and not go out and transform our communities and meet the needs and be kind? Well, there's obviously something deficient if we don't. Yeah. By the way, the people who, um, who were appointed to run the food bank, yeah. uh, you know, they were well-attested people. They yeah. weren't just the, you know, the, the hangers-on. These yeah, were people yeah. full of the spirit, full exactly. of wisdom, passion. They were Pentecostals, weren't they? Totally Pentecostal. <laughs> and they ran the food bank. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a lesser ministry no. at all. It's really genuinely spirit-empowered, yeah. isn't yeah, it? It really is. Absolutely. As, as we're going forward and advancing in our mission, Chris, do you feel that community engagement, and actually let's, let's bring social justice into that because mm. we've got mm. a whole bunch of stuff happening, addressing, you know, somebody once told me that you've got the needs down river, but then you've got the issues up river. Mm. And so we, we want to be hitting the conversations and people like Catherine and Dominic are doing a great job yeah. at really kind of getting that onto our agenda and moving yeah. forward. But obviously there are still the needs down river that we need to be meeting. I think it's quite an important aspect of our evangelism as we're going forward, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Again, season. What season are we in? People are facing unprecedented levels of personal and family and community challenge. 
And there's never been a time in, in our lifetime where it's been more important that we join together the, the, the life-saving words of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus. But the gospel is holistic, mm -hmm. and it is about uh, responding to people where they are. Also about becoming community. I'm convinced that we have to rediscover in the early chapters of the book of Acts that what their journey was like. They became, they weren't automatically because they responded to Jesus's call to follow him as his disciples. They didn't automatically become loving, connected, mm. sacrificial. Mm. They had to learn how to do that through right. the stuff of life. And yeah. I think that was one of the great undisclosed open secrets of the Bible. We kind of act like it's automatic. You come to a building or you mm. join a program and, and you suddenly it's all sorted. No, it's not. We have to do this stuff in real time with real people in yeah. real places. Good. Where we learn how to love one another, care for one another unconditionally. Yeah. And yet in, the, in that place, God is present in ordinary people to help us together to have moments of transformation. Yeah with others. Yeah. Yeah. So divine appointments happen at food banks. Yeah. That, that they happen also in, 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 on the streets and not just in yeah. our yeah. regular scheduled services. Sure. So I think this is where we are. Let's yeah. become the church again yeah. mm -hmm. that is authentic, that is actually genuinely learning how to do this. Yeah. And you know, it actually tends to happen that when you get around people who are being transformed by the goodness and the grace of God, it's almost natural to be drawn into doing things to share that yeah. with others. Yes, absolutely. Very good. We've really loved discussing today and in other videos uh, about these strategic partnerships that we believe God has brought to us to help us as we seek to develop our national evangelism vision. We really believe when it comes to people coming to Christ that it's a journey. And we really believe that relevant words, caring actions and the Spirit's power uh, the things that are going to inform that journey. We're on a journey. We'd love to hear more from you and we'll be sharing more in future times. If you want to find out more about how you can respond to what we've been talking about in this video or in previous videos, then the details coming up on the screen. We'd love to hear for you. We pray for you in your local church that you will have God's richest blessing. Will you journey with us as we seek to journey as a movement and advance into a new landscape, a new decade of evangelism in what we believe is not a good idea, but a God idea. Come on. Thank you.